Will you pray with me? Well, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart here be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. A picture has the depth and color and emotion that would take a thousand words to describe adequately. It's no wonder then that taking pictures has increased dramatically with the invent of the smartphones. People love taking pictures. I remember when you used to have to put in rolls of film into the camera, and every picture was priceless, was valuable, because every picture cost money. Now we can take all the pictures we want, because no extra cost to taking a thousand pictures. Well, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then my sermon today contains about two and a half pictures. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> If a picture's worth a thousand words, then we have to get a lot of credit, we have to give a lot of credit to John the Evangelist who wrote the gospel today. In our passage which I read, which contains only 321 words, he paints a picture of Jesus as the Messiah. He paints a picture of Jesus as God, the God who he believes in. In the gospel of John, we are invited to look upon this picture, this painting, and see God who became incarnate in Jesus Christ. And we can believe in him ourselves. Well, as we look at these words in John, this painting of Jesus, we will be looking at God. And in seeing God, we are invited to believe in Jesus and receive the life that he offers us. We will also be challenged challenged to become witnesses to others about Jesus and offer them that same life that he offers. Today we are beginning a sermon series that we will work through the Gospel of John between now and Easter. You've probably noticed that the Gospel of John is different from the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The first three are called the Synoptic Gospels because they are similar to one another. They contain a synopsis, a summary of Jesus' life. They focus mostly on his earthly life, his birth, his parents, his life in general. The first three Gospels are very biographical about Jesus. The synoptic Gospels focus on who the person of Jesus is. Well, the Gospel of John takes a different focus. John looks at the divinity of Jesus. It allows us to look at Jesus, whose birth we just celebrated, and see God the divine. John's gospel is written with that purpose, that we might look at Jesus and know God. In the synoptic gospels, Jesus does most of his teachings through parables and sermons, teaching us about what the kingdom of God is like. In the gospel of John, Jesus paints a picture of God with himself. It's in John that we hear his seven I am statements describing himself. I am the vine. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. All identities of God. And where the first three Gospels focus our attention on Jesus as the person, John focuses our attention upward so we can see God in Jesus. I don't want you to strain or injure your neck at all, but I'd like you to look up for just a moment at our church ceiling. Now imagine if you are that you are in Rome, Italy, actually in the Vatican City, sitting in the Sistine Chapel. If you were there, you would be looking at one of the most famous paintings in the world, Michelangelo's depicting of the creation story in Genesis with probably the most famous part of it being the creation of humanity, where God is stretching out his finger, almost ready to touch Adam and give Adam life. The Sistine Chapel's painting helps focus our attention heavenward on who is God and God's presence in our lives. That's what the Gospel of John wants to do. He paints a picture of who God is in Jesus and focuses our attention heavenward. John says in verse 18, No one's ever seen God. It is God's only Son who makes Him known. 
So as we look through the Gospel of John, our focus will be shifted from earth up into heaven, from Jesus the person to God made known in him. Knowing God in Jesus, believing Jesus as God, is the purpose of his gospel. It's the purpose of John the Baptist as well. John the Baptist's ministry is outlined in verse 7. He was sent from God to be a witness, to testify to the light, the light that is in Jesus. He was a witness so that all might believe through him. Well, the Gospel of John is written by another John, whom we call John the Evangelist. His purpose is outlined at the end of his book. In chapter 20, he says, So that you may come to believe, and may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. That we might believe in Christ as the Messiah. Believing. Belief is the central main verb of the Gospel. Dale Bruner wrote in his commentary, Believing is the central human decision that is sought by the divine. God wants humanity to believe in God. God wants humanity to know God and believe in Him. That's why God sent Himself in Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John, chapter 6, there's a crowd that is listening to Jesus, and they ask Him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom God has sent. As we study the Gospel of John, as we look at Jesus the man, may his life and his teachings direct our gaze upward so that we may know God and believe in God in Jesus. Well, already in the prologue of the Gospel, what I read John the Evangelist begins to paint a picture of who Jesus is as God. I invite you to hear the description and allow it to paint an image of God in your mind. The first image is the image of life. Jesus is the very creator of life itself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. All things came into being through Him, and what has come into being in Him was life. John the Evangelist purposely echoes the beginning of Genesis, where God created the world and gave all things life. And that creation took place through Jesus. It is God and only God who gives life, who can create life. There's a story of a scientist who bragged one day, who bragged that science had come so far that now they could actually make life just like God. So God accepted his challenge. As the scientists began to gather some dirt for his experiments, God said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, get your own dirt. (laughs) Only God can make life. In Michelangelo's painting, the figure of Adam is lifeless, without energy, because God has not yet touched him and given him life. Jesus' touch is life-giving. In the Gospel of John, Jesus gives life back to Lazarus and raises him from the dead. Now, we're spending a lot of time and energy nowadays looking for signs of life way out in the universe. Just this past week, scientists in Seattle reported that they had discovered a burst of energy coming from somewhere beyond our galaxy. It was a very brief burst, and it originated in a galaxy some three billion light years away. Is there life out there? We spend a lot of time looking for life in distant galaxies. The good news of the gospel is that God, the creator of life, has come to earth. That we might know life. That we might have abundant life. The second image of God is God whose light dispels the darkness. The first thing God created in Genesis was light. Light is the image of God's presence, the presence of all that's good. John the Evangelist describes Jesus as the one who brings light, the light of God that dispels darkness. Light is good. Darkness is evil in the images of this painting. And the painting we have is of light illuminating the darkness and the darkness being powerless before it. There is a lot of darkness of evil in the world. One need only read the newspaper or listen to the news. 
Some comment that it's hard to believe that humanity can be so inhuman to one another. But I don't have a hard time believing it. The darkness doesn't surprise me because humanity is sinful, capable of doing these terrible things. Our history proves it. We see it in the prologue. Jesus came into this world, the world that he created, and the world turned its back on him. He came to what was his own, his own people, and his people rejected him. What does surprise me is the light that is in the world. What I think is more noteworthy is the good that people do for one another, the love that humanity shows to strangers. What should be hard for the world to understand is seeing people who don't know each other love one another and care for one another. It's hard for humanity to understand the light, the goodness that is in the world. That's why we have the Gospel of John. The light of God has come into the world and shattered the darkness. It is the light of God that helps us recognize the image of God in each other, that calls us to have compassion for one another. Well, finally, along with light and life, Jesus is full of God's grace. Grace upon grace, we are told. God's grace is God's glory that we see in Jesus Christ. I've often defined grace as the gift we get that we don't deserve. That's the definition of any gift. It's freely given. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. Well, the gift of God that Jesus has given us is that we are children of God. The gift of being children of God. Verse 12 says, To all who received him and who believed in his name, there's that focus on belief again, to all who believed him, he gave power to become children of God. That's grace. Grace that forgives us. According to C.S. Lewis, grace is the thing that makes the Christian faith unique that sets it apart from all other faiths, that God loves us without condition, and God's love comes to us free of charge. Life, light, and grace. The picture that God has painted for us in the prologue of John is summarized by life, light, and grace. So as we work our way through the Gospel of John, our painting will be filled in about who God is in Jesus. But as we do this, we must always ask ourselves, who do we say Jesus is? The main verb in the Gospel of John is believe. Do we believe in Jesus as the God who gives us life, light, and grace? The purpose of the Gospel was so that we might believe in Jesus as the Messiah and through that belief have life in his name. Jesus offers us life in John, abundant life. Well, through believing in him, we receive that life. We receive that grace. And we are adopted as children of God. That's the power God gives through believing in Jesus Christ. We are made children of God. My wife Kelly's sister and her brother-in-law have adopted a child. His name is Gus. He's about 10 years old. Well, it was their love for him that made Gus their child, regardless of any biology. And it is Gus's knowing they love him and believing in that love that gives him the power to be their child. In Jesus, God is saying we are loved. And it is our believing in that love that makes us children of God. As we receive the love of God and we are given abundant life, we ourselves become paintings that show God's love to others. John the Baptist was sent to be a witness, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. We are also called to be witnesses, to live our faiths so that others might know Jesus Christ through us. Well, the Greek word for witness and testify here is marturion, the root word for martyr. To be a martyr is to lay down one's life. To witness or to testify to the gospel is to lay down one's life for the gospel. Now we tend to think of martyrs as paying the ultimate sacrifice and dying for a cause. But there are many ways that we can lay down our life and witness to the gospel. 
First, by making it a priority in our life and placing our lives second. Second, by volunteering for the gospel, by laying before God our time and our talents, allowing God to use us. And finally, when we give money in the offering, it costs us something in our lives. It means we say no to something we want and give it up for God. Being a witness, testifying about God, may involve martyrdom, but first it involves discipledom, laying down our lives to be a disciple. When we witness to Jesus Christ with our lives, we paint a picture for the world so that they too can see and believe that Jesus is the Messiah and have life and grace in his name. Who is Jesus? John the Evangelist and John the Baptist witnessed to him being God. Well, by the words of the gospel, may we come to know the word of God, the word of God made flesh. May we believe in the life and light and grace that he brings into our lives. And by our witnessing, may our lives be a picture so that others may see and receive that grace and life and light of God in their lives. Amen.